So over in this corner of my layout, I've got a hidden staging track that is also the interchange for the Canadian Pacific Railway. Which is great, it disappears under the layout and it allows me to get more traffic coming in and out from various places in the rest of the world. The only downside is, being a hidden staging track, I can't see what happens once the uh, train goes out of sight. So there is a hidden hatch under here so that I can pull that up to access it if my train derails or something or goes off the track but I still can't see what's going on down there when the covers on and yeah okay I'm gonna finish scenic in that eventually but I'm not worried about that right now um, actually the uh, the bushes that are on there are actually glued on to screws that are in there for handles anyway that's a bit of an aside um so down here I need to figure out a way to tell where the train is where the end of it is before it crashes into my high-tech buffer here and derails and lands on the bookshelf underneath normally I would just use one of my little infrared detection modules like I have uh, stuck in the track here and there, but this tra this piece of uh, plywood underneath here is extra thick and spliced together with two or three pieces of wood and just random whateverness. So it's about that thick, and I don't really want to drill through it and and do this. So I'm going to try a slightly different method. Don't know if it's going to work or not. You'll have to stick around to find out, I guess. After spending a few hours tinkering with the circuit and coming up with a circuit that actually did work, it was a little bit fiddly to get the alignment uh, correct, but it did work. I decided to take a few hours off in the evening and then it occurred to me that I could just use one of these modules, one of the existing modules, and put it just somewhere above the track because it's not going to be visible anyway, it's a hidden yard. And then I don't have to worry about how finicky the uh, this thing is here. So I think I'm just going to... That would have worked. It definitely would have worked. It's a little bit finicky to get the photo detector and the LED aligned so that they are directly seeing each other. But it's possible. But the reflective version is so much easier to set up. And they're cheap and I got a bunch of them, so why wouldn't I? So I have 5 volts going to the anode side of the LED and to here. I have ground just coming straight from the power supply ground and out going through the resistor to the cathode side of there. So uh, nothing indicated here. When I bring something in. That's what I want. That's exactly what I want. Okay. Now then I just have to duplicate that, not on the breadboard, but on the end of my wire here. Okay, I've got my wiring harness built. So I've got a three pin um, connector there, three wires going back, splitting off to power and ground. Right now just temporarily coming out of my little power supply, which is set to five volts. And then the power wire and and signal wire going into this little two pin block or two conductor block. Hmm, I just noticed it's marked live and neutral. I don't care, I'm not using it for power, for AC power. Um anyway. So signal and uh five volts goes through here to the LED, which is in a little bezel. So that it just goes on like that and then it pushes through the hole that I'm going to drill to mount it. So when I turn this on, um, so we get the power LED here. When something like an errant train comes into the view of this thing, the bright orange warning LED comes on. Nice and simple. Okay, let's install it. 
first thing to do I guess would be remove my buffer temporarily and put it back later and then I've taken the module and mounted it on one of these little standoff feet that I got in a mailbag a while back using a plastic M3 screw in the top and then just a little Phillips screw down there to hold it in place I'll kind of line it up like that and run it down that's mostly going into the cork I might need a longer screw huh. that does the job I'm going to bend these LEDs you know, the LED and the uh, sensor down a little bit and I think I'll adjust my buffer make it not quite so tall that's easy to adjust just a little bit of exacto action okay there that's in place really the only thing left to, to do for that part is to plug it in and then the rest of the wiring I think I will drop down under the layout and deal with it down there so here we are under the layout you can see the detector and the buffer back there and the track up there here is my five volts that I've got just running around the layout for general utility use now I'm sure I'm going to get in the way of the camera here but it can't be helped that's just coming from a power supply over by the DCC control station not attached to it or part of it just oh crap that's tight That's better. Bigger tools, more power. As I was saying, this is just coming from a random power supply that's located over by the DCC command station. It's not part of it, it's just an additional power supply that I happen to have. So now, oh wrote these wires vaguely neatly and yeah, I think I'll actually disconnect the LED completely until I mount it um, I'll screw this up here somewhere where you can't see it and I can't see it um, but I'll have to get my head in there and screw that up in there someplace through some precise measuring and just generally looking around and seeing where, how long the wires will go and where I kind of want it. I've decided that X marks the spot right there for the LED to be mounted. So, poke the bezel into the hole. No, I can't do that. I have to put the LED in the bezel before I put it in the hole, don't I? Yes, because that locks onto the LED. Okay. Uh, so that's there. squeeze and press fit that into the hole so with the LED in the bezel it doesn't squeeze down as easily but it uh, it grips on there Does that look like a little indicator light okay now I just have to go under and hook these up to my little terminal block that I screwed in there there's the LED's terminal block and again I'm sure I'm going to block the camera with my big hands here but it can't be helped
Okay, that's all connected. And now, of course, the most important question. Does it work? Yes, it does. Well, that's pretty impressive. Okay, it's just a little blinking light, but... I think that's pretty good. Simple little project. I know I tried to overcomplicate it at the first, but it turned out to be much more simple than I thought. That's not my permanent fascia either. That's just the structural lumber of the layout that this is put into. But eventually, I'm going to put a fascia on made out of masonite, probably, which is fairly standard and traditional. And at that point, I will remount that LED and these switches and any other switch and controls. Um, programming control or programming track control, the uh, local net connectors, all that stuff will eventually get remounted onto actually a piece of fascia that looks very much like this only that carries on all the way around the layout that'll do it for today thanks for watching i will talk to you